Uh, the following video shows the proof of the second part of the theorem on the slide you see right now. So, here's my slide, which is called Algebraic Properties of Limits. Yeah. So, imagine if you had something like this in your assignment. That's the amount of the information you have to put in your assignment. Exactly what I'm going to present right now. So, we, have, we start with two functions. I'm proving the second part of that theorem on that slide. We're having two functions. One of them is a vector function. The other one is a numerical function. Both of them define on this interval i, subset of r. f has its own components. Is the components. Each component is the individual function. A numerical function, I'm sorry. So by definition, that's the definition of the slide on the slide which I just closed, but I showed it to you. By definition, if I define a limit for the vector function, I define it in the per component sense. Here it is. Is it coming or what? Yeah, it is coming. Here it is. So here's my theorem. Well, one third of that theorem, which says that if I compute the limit of the product of this type, lambda t times f of t, is the same as compute the limit of lambda of t and limit of f of t, and then take the product afterwards. Here's my proof. We start with the left-hand side. And just for the convenience, and that's a very good, good, good way of doing things, introduce new names for convenience of the reader, me, me, and the other lecturer. Or actually, I don't know if you follow it. Actually, the assignment, the, your writing assignment will be partially peer evaluated. So when I say for convenience of the reader, it means the person next to you. So it's a good thing to do when you introduce a new notation. Here's my new notation, g of t. It's my new function. So the components of this new function, I can explicitly present them because this is a scaling, right, of the vector function. Here's the components of my g function. You see, I individually scale every component. And now I start arguing the left-hand side, this part. I say this. By asterisk, is the asterisk. By the definition of my limit, by asterisk, the limit of g, it's individual limits of every component. Here it is. Now, these two, oh, well, it's not two, it's n of them here, right? We have n limits in the, as components of my g, and as, as a right-hand side here. All of those limits are numerical limits. They are no longer the limits of vector functions or anything like that. They are numerical limits. And for those numerical limits, we know that the limit of a product, it's a product of limits. We know it from the first year. Here's the step where, where I reference the first year's material. When I say, by the knowledge I acquired in the first year, well, by the knowledge we together acquired in the first year, we say that the limit of these individual functions, so I, on, on this slide I summarize it like this, by the properties of numerical limits, I can say that each individual limit of lambda t times x sub i t is a product of limits of factors. Again, it's another interesting trick for you. you see, rather than writing limit of this, of this, and of this, I use this index i, like a general index, to make the presentation shorter, but still without losing any information I'm delivering. It's a good trick. You can use it in your presentation, in your writing assignment. So let's just keep on. So what do I say now? If I now, it's another abbreviation, you see? If I use the letter b to abbreviate the limit of the lambda function alone, and probably I should put here Oh, come on, hurry up. Colon, it's a relatively standard convention in your presentation. When you put a colon and the equal sign, it reads like equal by definition, rather than just equal. So if I define this new symbol B, it's another abbreviation, then I can replace every bracket of this type in this right-hand side by B. So I will then have that the limit of G, I continue this line, 
is this expression. You see? I split every limit of product here according to this rule, and the first factor I abbreviated with B. One, two, three, four N. Now, we have a common factor across the components of the vector. We can pull this common factor in front. Here it is. My B counts as a common factor in front of my vector. And now I can say by asterisk again, because it's another reference to the asterisk. By asterisk again, this is B times the limit of bold F of T. And that's the right-hand side of the expression we need to prove, isn't it? This is B.